माता धन्यवाद सर श्रीमती निर्मला सीतारमन टू रिप्लाई द डिस्कशन थैंक यू सर सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर आई अंडरस्टैंड द टोटल ऑफ थर्टी थ्री मेंबर्स हैव स्पोकन एंड टुडे डिस्टिंक्टली ओनली ऑन द फाइनेंस कमीशन फाइनेंस बिल about nine speakers have spoken i thank all the members who have contributed to this debate although the budget speech and the finance bill all come with the spirit of vote on account and interim budget there are aspects on which honorable members have spoken while just highlighting some features of the interim budget and not going into greater details into it i'll try to respond to as many members who have spoken on the subject sir uh, the budget and uh, equally uh, we are talking about the interim budget of government of india and the supplementary demand for grants for the earlier year for the current running year 23 24 for the government of india and we are also dealing with jnk's budget interim budget for a part year for 24 25 as much as we are talking about supplementary demand for grants of jnk so we are dealing with four plus the finance act finance bill which on par being passed will become the act so totally about five different legislative things we are talking about uh, sir um, the highlight of the interim budget is that we are indicating clearly the emphasis given on capital expenditure for one immediately after covid to revive the economy and two subsequently after a year or two to sustain the good pace at which indian economy is growing the route that we are taking is spend on public infrastructure creation asset creation because that as opposed to spending on revenue expenditure gives you better returns for the investment made i was a bit astonished to hear honorable member jawhar sarkar probably confuse capital expenditure with expenditure on capitalists so i'm sorry capital expenditure is spent on creating assets which can be used by all citizens equally and their common infrastructure which improves the Uh, ease of living for everybody and gives access to farmers access to small manufacturers to reach the nearest port of call or railway station or market yard in a better way in a smoother way in a short time so it's a bit worrying and that is because i presume somebody who's had a long tenure in bureaucracy by mistake i would like to believe mixes up capital expenditure with capital no, no. sir i've heard no, he no, should allow please. me to speak now please no this is becoming no, a Sarkar. bit too no, much i i will not allow it we have to believe in some procedure please please ah yes yes i'm both minister. here when wrong is being said sir this kind of distortion to certain terminologies which are used in the budget and which have been used even earlier cannot be i'm sorry to submit you may correct me sir cannot be without an intent which is not completely bona fide this is not acceptable at all and if ideology drives us to say it please let us let us please let us have them say that honorable members i respond to now honorable member randeep surjewala has raised a lot of relevant pertinent questions on agriculture i'll certainly give him as much answer as is possible by me but to give a twist even tongue in cheek twist in a august house like this i want the chair to take a view on it because ultimately all of us are seeking answers trying to give solutions and if the answers are not up to it i'm well ready to accept corrections 
This type of twisting on words worry me a lot because all of us are sitting and hearing one another with seriousness. We want to address it. So, sorry, sir, to begin like this. Sir, therefore, the highlight of the interim budget, being interim asset may, is to underline the fact that like the way we, during recovery, and post that to sustain a good growth for the economy, and to have a greater multiplier effect, so that without us having to spend on revenue, which gives less return for a rupee, and I'm basing it on a RBI study, if for a rupee spent on revenue expenditure, you get hardly 0.98 only, meaning for every rupee spent, not even 98 paisa return comes. Whereas when you spend on capital expenditure, for every rupee spent, in the short duration, you get about 1.46 uh, paisa, 1 rupee 46 paisa return, and in the medium and long term also, there is return. And therefore, the route of spending money through the public investment in infrastructure gives us greater returns and in situ it creates jobs where the projects are being done, where money is being spent, public money is being spent, jobs are created, local services also benefit and that ripple effect in that ecosystem can have greater uh, impact on the neighboring economies which are smaller pockets which can become like ripples in a pond. Therefore, this route globally has been adopted as one sure short way in which you can get sustainable growth, and we are seeing it, and therefore, even in this budget, we have committed to spend about 17% higher than even the RE of 23-24, the current year's RE being whatever it is, we are spending 17% more for the coming year. So, then, sir, that same outlay is higher than the projected GDP growth rate of 10.5% during the next financial year. So if you're projecting a GDP growth rate, the growth in the capital expenditure um, for creation of public infrastructure is growing faster than the real GDP growth itself, the projected number. Sir, with the capital expenditure being the focus, equally, we've in the last three, four years particularly, we have made sure our debt management and also the overall management of the fiscal is done in such a way that we honor the glide path for the fiscal deficit that we had given in 21. So if the glide path for the fiscal deficit had to take one particular trajectory, and come down in a particular fashion. We have complied with that. That was approved by the Honorable Houses and in the Parliament, and we have complied with that. This year, actually, I could have stopped at, oh, we've reached 5.9, that is complying with it, that is fine. No, but even further, we brought it down one decimal point further down, and instead of 5.9, this year we have given a fiscal deficit number of 5.8%. Similarly, for the forthcoming year, where it could have been 5.2, we have made an effort to bring it down to 5.1 without in any way compromising on expenditure, particularly on welfare and also taking care of the rural economy. So these two points I would like to highlight uh, for the uh, benefit of the House. And when I said that we are making sure that the fiscal deficit will uh, be managed without hurting any of those projects which are important, I just want to quote a selection of projects and um, schemes which will showcase that the, that the cut has not happened at all in any of this, that I have to make sure that the fiscal deficit is managed. I'm trimming down on these, none of that. So for instance, Department of School Education and Literacy. BE, budgeted estimate of 23-24, the current year during 1st February 23, had 68,805 crores. What we have given in the BE now in the interim budget 
for the coming year is 72,474. It has not come down, it's gone up. Then the Department of Health and Family Welfare. 86,175 was the BE. Now it is 87,657. It's not come down, it's gone up. Ministry of Minority Affairs. 3,098 crores, BE 23, 24. Now it is 3,183 crores. Department of Rural Development, which is so significant for many of the rural-based projects, 1,57,545 crores in the BE 23-24. Now it's gone to 1,77,566 crores. Tribal Affairs, 12,462 BE, 13,000 BE now. Department of Social Justice and Empowerment, 12,847 crores BE, 13,000 crores now. Ministry of Women and Child Development, 25,449 crores, BE 23, 24. Now it is 26,092 crores for the BE of the coming year. Capital allocations, sir, the major ones, which generate employment, which create assets, which give better market linkages for farmers, and which also provide better connectivity so that ease of living also is highlighted for common citizens. 2,58,606 was the BE allocation for road transport and highways. Whereas now in the interim budget, it is 2,72,241 crores. Railways, 2,40,000 crores in the BE. Now it is 2,52,000 crores. Defense, 1,71,375 crores. Now it is 1,82,241. States were given an amount with interest-free proposition and also that it will be given for 50 years where they don't need to service the loan nor do they need to give any principal back. 1,30,000 crore was done in the BE 23, 24. We have retained that 1,30,000. So states are actively participating in asset creation with public money. This money is given by us. They themselves would also invest in capital expenditure. So over and above what the states put, that's not a condition, but over and above what they put, we have allocated this much. And they are, uh, as per a formula given, for the tax devolution, so is the formula used for this also, so that every state gets a bit of uh, the capital expenditure allocation. So the allocation for major flagship schemes, PM Kisan, about which uh, Honorable Member Surjewala spoke and about which I will certainly reply him, but I want to tell you, 60,000 crores was allocated in the budget uh, estimates, 23-24, it continues to be 60,000 even now for 24-25. PM Awas Yojana, rural, 54,487 crores is now 54,500. PM Awas Yojana, urban, 25,103 is now 26,171 crores. Jal Mission, 70,000 crores in the budget estimate, now 70,163 crores. Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, the M. Manrega, 60,000 in BE 23 24. Now it is 86,000 crores 24 25 BE. Gram Sadak Yojana, 19,000 crore, is kept at 19,000 crores. Samagra Siksha, 37,453, is now 37,500. PLI schemes, 8,965. Now it is 16,021. So no major scheme, no major uh, flagship scheme has been uh, curtailed, nor have we reduced the allocation. If I talk about the supplementary, sir, this is the second and the final batch of supplementary for this year, 23-24. And in that, primarily, there are 71 demands, one appropriation, but where does this money go, the uh, supplementary demand for grant, if the House passes it, where does this money go? 3,000 goes, crore, that is, 
3,000 crore goes for nutrient-based subsidy scheme for P and K fertilizers. fertilizers. Department of Food and Public Distribution for PM Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana gets 9,231 crores. Defense services for their revenue expenditure, which is for meeting additional expenditure towards pay and allowances of armed forces and other establishment expenditure requirements, such as stores, transportation, and ECHS, get 13,548. Department of Economic Affairs gets 5,000, that is for transfer to senior citizen welfare fund. Transfers to Jammu and Kashmir, They've asked for 3,000 crores. That is for essentially meeting additional expenditure towards central assistance to the Union territory for bridging their resource gap. So these are the features, sir. The Jammu Kashmir interim budget and also the supplementary demand for grants, I just want to highlight. The vote on account has come for seeking the the approval of the House for 59,364 crores. The BE for total 24-25 is 1,18,728 crores. Of that, they have sought the vote on account for 59,364 crores. The central government will provide 41,751 crore to the government of Jammu and Kashmir for the year 23-24 and that is the current year, and 37,278 crores in the year 24-25 as assistance to the Union territory. And their supplementary demand for grants, which I for a moment said from our books, is 8,713 crore, and that is mainly for debt, repayment of debt, and power procurement. So these are the highlights of all the four uh, budgets, interim and supplementary, Government of India and GNK. Sir, I'll also for a moment speak about what are the main features of the finance bill this time. With that, I would have addressed the features of all the bills. The main feature of the finance bill, with all the taxes remaining the same, we have not changed the rates at all, is there are certain changes to the TCS regime, the tax collection at source regime, which were made in the Finance Act of 2023. And thereafter, some changes were announced through a press release uh, as a matter of clarification on 28 June 2023. But uh, regarding that, that clarification was regarding the remittances under the liberalized remittance scheme, the LRS scheme and on sale of overseas tour packages, the program packages, travel, tourism, tour pa packages. In line with the announcements made, amends, amendments have been proposed in the finance bill, which is an announcement already made. The mention was already made in the last year's budget, but this is the budget through which, this is the Finance Act uh, bill through which we are coming up with those changes. The second one, sir, which is worth noting, is the startups. Certain startups are eligible for some tax benefits if they are incorporated before 1st April 2024, that is this year. The period of incorporation of such eligible startups is proposed to be extended by one year, that is, if they register or incorporate their company by 1st April 2025, they'll still be eligible for those tax benefits. So we've just given that one extension. Similarly, for units located in the International Financial Services Center, we had earlier said similarly, if they are uh, established before 31st March 2024, those tax incentives will be available for them. But now we are extending them also till 31st March 2025. That's a second change which is being brought through the finance bill. The third one, sir, is an extension again of limitation date of investments made by the sovereign wealth funds and pension funds, uh, the investments being made in India by the sovereign wealth funds and pension funds also attracted some uh, 
benefits. Those are also, that is if they invest in infrastructure sector, they are also getting extended till 31st March 2025. And the last one, which is of very important consequence for middle class, small taxpayers, and that is a very big issue which I want to highlight. It is proposed, sir, to remit small unverified demands up to 25,000 rupees, 25,000 rupees, which relate to financial year 2009-10 and also earlier years. Just to remind honorable members that some months ago, there were a lot of discussion about some tax claims are being made which pertain even to 1962, 1970, 1980. How come the tax is being claimed now for those past several years? So those are getting addressed in this, and there are demands pertaining to the financial year 9-10 and also pertaining to the year 10-11, 2010-11. Similarly, the demands for 10-11 uh, up to 10,000 rupees are also proposed to be withdrawn. So it will be a big relief for small taxpayers who are being, uh, for very long years, being pestered for some dues, some 500 rupees, th some 1,000 rupees like that, accumulating to 25,000 rupees, and in some other cases, 10,000 rupees. So these are the only changes which are being brought in in this finance bill, and no tax rates are being amended. So, Therefore, the discussions which are being held here on these highlighted features and other features is what I want to respond to. So the particular discussion on uh, by Sri A.D. Singh and also Imran Pratapgari, I can't see both of them, but never mind. Um, I'll respond to them, sir. Although in Lok Sabha, if the member is not present, I'm not expected to answer, but I will highlight some of the points because my, many other members may also be interested in knowing the answer. So the labor force in the country has increased from 49.8% in 2017-18 to 57.9% in 22-23. Rural areas, the labor force has increased from 50.7% in 2017 18 to 60.8% in 22-23. The workforce in the rural areas increased from 48.1% to 59.4% by 22-23. So for the rural areas, unemployment rate, for the rural areas, unemployment rate has actually decreased from 5.3% in 2017-18 to 2.4% in 22-23. So I want this to be laid on the table for clarity so when members raise the issue, this is something which I would request them to take cognizance of. Similarly, sir, women labor force participation has risen from 37%, risen to 37%. Women labor force participation has risen to 37% in 2023. It is a substantial increase from 23.3% recorded in 2017-18. So in a matter of five years, that is where we have gone. And it's also a surge. It is a surge of 13.7% points during the last five years. Female enrollment in higher education has also increased by 32% since 2014-15. So there are facts which all of us should take cognizance of even as we talk of our Indian economy. There's more work to be done, I grant that, but there are significant progresses being made. We need to take cognizance of it, sir. So the, the, uh, one of the members, Again, probably Sri A.D. Singh and Sri Imran Pratapgadi had spoken about Lakpati Didi and in that about women's participation. I want to highlight the fact that currently 83 lakh SSGs, 
with nine crore women working across the country uh, with empowerment and also with self-reliance. In this interim budget, I have announced to enhance the target for Lakpati Didi from two crores to three crores. That is also with government assistance, we are going to train them in using very many marketing techniques and also to work with them to make them part of uh, you know, gem portal or market their goods through any of the ONDCs or even if they are prepared through the SHG, give them training for using drones which can be used in the farms and the fields in the rural areas. Sir, Sri Santanu Sen, I can't see him here, uh, had raised this question about retail inflation, sir. Retail inflation, I'm glad to say, has declined. In fact, today, one of the newspapers very clearly showed how the cost of thali, a plate of food, has actually come down, and come down particularly for not the vegetarian, but uh, those who have non-vegetarian. So the cost has been calculated, and today the media carried it, but I'm here happy to say that in retail inflation has declined, for, declined from an average of 6.8% in April, December 22 to 5.5% in the corresponding period of 2023. The RBI also had a, a monetary policy committee meeting, and even they have been indicating that inflation is coming down and it is well within the tolerance band. This is not the first time they're saying it. Last time they met also, for that period, they did say it. The core inflation has declined from 5.1% in April 2023 to 3.8% in December 2023. Sir, Sri Santanu Sen also spoke about global hunger index. For the benefit of the House, I want to submit humbly, global hunger index is not a balanced approach to measuring hunger. Let's be conscious of it. It is... I would like to sum humbly sum it. As much as it is said that you can't doubt those agencies, the very proposition of looking at data given by anybody just as the data given by Government of India is also subject to peer verification. That is the whole idea of data, uh, observers, economists, statist statisticians looking at data just as they <coughs> critique government data. Nobody is beyond criticism. Nobody is beyond critiquing. So, no, let me finish my, my answer, third. sir. I've heard every one of them. Honorable, honorable members, sometimes it is so ridiculous, so farcical, that some countries find, according to such calibration, that they are head of India. And they are worried. They are surprised. We need to be cognizant of it. How can we allow any organization to calibrate us, generate an ecosystem, generate an impression, and then we have illustrious members with education abroad indicating to us we must believe in them. Very frankly, this house, I appeal to all the members, this house needs to take note of the ground reality. We must come out of that servility that any agency without examining that will indicate where we are, how we are. My health has to be assessed my, by my doctor. Someone there will say my health is not good. Sir, this is very dangerous, let me tell you. The honorable member is not here. Mr. Kapil Sibal has found a new role. And the new role is of a journalist. Now, distinguished senior advocate becomes a journalist and then goes to a former governor and then evaluates my health. 
examines my spine. Though the act, of course, is highly despicable, I do not want to go into it, but can we allow just anyone to engage into these activities? Within the country, we have enough bodies. I do want there must be proper statistical evaluation, a robust mechanism to evaluate our health and economy. But surely we cannot place ourselves in the hands of those bodies. Already enough damage has been done by them. Every time India's rise is there, trust me, do some homework, and you are capable of doing it, ma'am. You will have enough time also after some time. What I mean to say, we must engage objectively. One second, take your seat. Objectively, passionately. I am not looking it from political partisan, partisan prism. We must learn to have our robust mechanism. We will evaluate ourselves and then we'll respond. Anybody, anywhere in the globe, working in inspired manner, motivated by someone else, funded by someone else, says it and we say gospel truth. Sorry, we'll have a debate in the next session on this. We will not have this calibration, Honorable Finance Minister. Thank you, sir. Sir, when Please. I say it is not on a balanced approach to measuring hunger, I am giving the reasons why. Please, 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 please. Take your seat. Nothing will go on record, John Bittas. Take your seat. Sir, I'm stating as to why, when I say it's not balanced approach, I'm stating my reasons. The reasons can be rejected. But I, as much as any other member, would also want to place on record, because all of us speak responsibly. We bring in data. It is up to the House to hear it and contradict it or accept it. But please hear first. Sir, the multi, uh, it measures multidimensional nature of hunger by just relying on four indicators. Undernourishment, child wasting, child stunting, and child mortality. It is not a comprehensive index, as three of the four parameters focus only on children. The sample size of the study is only 3,000 households. IMR, infant mortality rate, is falling in the country from 40 to 40.7 in 2015-16 to 35.2 in 2019-21. This is the NFHS survey. Sample size is 6.37 lakh households. So we need to also please look at what is the basis with which the study is coming out. Another, as per the NFHS 5, there has been a broad-based improvement in indicators relating to child health and nutrition with a decline in the proportion of stunted, wasted, underweight children under the age of five. So a study which we are doing and that is based itself on 6.37 lakh households. Compared to 3,000 households, we have a reason to question the methodology. And therefore, I'm putting this point out. And I'm sure each one of us, as members who have our own experience in public service, can please look at this and have a peer review done. No objections. And it is not as if everything which is against the government we would reject. These are data which all of us are going to use today. I use data belonging to period when you were in government. Absolutely common thing to do. I have no objections, but my reasons are these. And then, sir, India has adopted a universal food security framework to protect its citizens from hunger through PM Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. In the BE of 24-25, towards food security, 2.05 lakh crores has been given. This covers 80 crore beneficiaries. They're getting, we, it is definitely the responsibility of the government. 
It's not as, oh, I'm giving. No, not in that sense. But we want to be sure that nobody's left out. But sometimes we are critiqued for that as well. Oh, which means you're admitting 80 crore people up. Oh, please. You can't have it both ways. The data was then, and based on that, we're giving it. Somebody else's data, which is based on 3,000 household samples, is reliable. But that data, which Government of India gives, because it's based on 6 lakh households, or boom, is not reliable. Anything which is critiquing government is good enough. Anything which is actually telling the truth about the government, reject it. Sorry, hypocrisy nahi chalegi. Ye hypocrisy nahi chalegi. Sir, furthermore, under PM portion scheme, under PM portion scheme in BE 24-25, the amount has been increased to 12,400 67 crores, the primary objective of the scheme is to improve the nutritional status of children studying in classes 1 to 8 in eligible schools. So that is one thing, sir. There were questions about inflation, how we are managing it. I've been answering questions in this house, but I would just want to highlight that in order to enhance access to food, the government has taken very critical steps for instance, to make available atta, to make available dal, and to make available onion, and to make available rice. Bharat branded atta, Bharat branded dal, and Bharat branded rice are now available in the market. It's been available for some time. I'll give you the data for it, sir. Bharat atta, 27.50 rupees, meaning 27 rupees 50 paisa per kg. I'm not just saying the number. Till now, 2.37 lakh metric tons have already been sold in the market. People have bought it as on 28th January 2024. So it's not as if we've made a provision and people are not buying it. People are buying it at that price. To that extent, the prices are cooling down. Bharat Dal, 60 rupee per kg for one kg pack or 55 rupees per kg for 30 kgs bag. And in that, 2.97 lakh metric tons as of 31st January 2024 have already been sold in the market. Bharat rice, only launched a few days ago, gives rice at 29 rupees per kg. Onion is being sold at 25 rupees per kg. And even onion, as of 3rd, February 2024, 3.9 lakh metric tons. Honorable members, sold. now it is 6 p.m. The Business Advisory Committee has already recommended that the House may sit beyond 6 p.m. to transact the business listed for the day. Therefore, the time of the House is extended beyond 6 p.m. till the disposal of the business listed for today. Honorable Finance Minister. So, to, similarly, Tour is being imported, Urad is being imported, just so they have been made free category for import so that our market does not fall short of uh, pulses. And this extension of free category is now available till 31st March 2025. So any trader can import and supply to the market. Similarly, Tour Dal, uh, 8.79 lakh metric tons has already been imported in the year 2023. 0.38 lakh million tons in the month of January 2024 itself till January 20th. And they are mainly being imported from Mozambique, Myanmar, Tanzania, Sudan, and Malawi. We also import, but small quantities from Kenya and Nigeria. Now, India also imported Masoor Dal so that the prices will come down. 15.14 lakh metric tons of Masoor from um, from different countries, sir, Australia, Canada, and Russia, in the year 2023, <coughs> and 0.84 lakh million tons in the month of January 2024 have been imported. Similarly, Urad has also been imported. So for the steps that the government has taken to contain inflation and give essential goods at affordable price is through various different means. 
by branded products which are marketed through NAFED and other mother dairy-like stores, or by open market operations, by releasing grains which are in the uh, buffer stock, or allowing imports to come into this country so that prices can be contained. Sir, on the transfer to states, again, uh, Honorable Member A.D. Singh, Shantanu Sen, and Sri Girirajan. I don't know if they are here, but the reply, uh, I just want to be sure. Devolution, as is recommended by the Finance Commission, is 100% formed followed by us. There is no way, no way that any violation has happened. I have followed it to the last word. I repeat, <coughs> whatever was recommended by the Finance Commission has already been given as per time and it will be given so till the time of the Finance Commission. In B2425, sir, total resources being transferred to states including devolution to the state share, devolution of the state share from the taxable pool, grants and loans, releases under the centrally sponsored schemes are all put together expected to be 22 lakhs, 22,264 crore, which shows an increase of 4 lakh, 13,848 crore over the actuals of 22-23. This is a 47 percent, uh, this is 47 percent of the budget of 2024-25. So payments are happening to the states in time and there is no due held back. I want to be sure that particular data for Kerala and for Tamil Nadu are mentioned here. Sir. Tax devolution between 2004 and 14 in crores for Kerala was 46,303 <coughs> crores. 4 to 14, 10 years, 46,303. That was the transfer to Kerala. Between 2014 and 24, and I'm here talking about figure ending 22nd December 2023, just two months ago. 46,303 for the 10 years between 2004 to 14. 2014 to 24, only up to December 2023, 1,50,140 crores Kerala. The percentage change is 224% increase. That is tax devolution, sir. Grants and aid, and this is open for anyone to see. Transfer are, are all there. Reserve Bank is monitoring, and publicly, Government of Kerala can release the figure. Is this received or not? So, I'm not just giving a number which cannot be verified. It's been received. Grants and aid from Government of India, 2004 to 14, 25,629.7 crores. 10 years between 2004 and 14. 2014 to 24, Prime Minister Modi, Government NDA, grants and aid from Government of India to Kerala compared to 25,000 something in these 10 years, 1,43,117 crores. So compared to 10 years of UPA, Nine years of NDA, 458% increase or 5.58 times increase. So that's aid, grants and aid. Sir, release under the special assistance to states for capital expenditure, which we commenced from 2020-21 because of post-COVID, as I said, we are also having capital expenditure uh, funding given to states 50-year interest free. 2020-2021, the first year when we started post-COVID, 82 crores. 
21, 22. And this, no finance commission has asked me to do. Finance commission has not said, you have to give money to the states for capital expenditure. No. Because the recovery of the economy and sustaining the growth of the economy was very high priority and Prime Minister's guidance to me was, you should give money for the states to do their own projects. And therefore, the first year was 82 crores to Kerala. The second year, 21, 22 was 239 crores. 22, 23 is 1,903 crores. So all this has been released. Kerala received all this. In addition, rupees 18,087 crore have also been provided as additional borrowing to the state in 2020-21 in view of the pandemic. So this is absolutely clear that there's no reduction for Kerala. I want to humbly submit. Now I move to Tamil Nadu, sir. Tax devolution, 10 years, 2004 to 14, 94,977 crores. 2014 to 24, 277,444 crores. I don't know if any member from Tamil Nadu is here. Ah, sorry. Come on, come on, come on. Samaki ji. Sorry, I didn't notice. Sorry. Notice, 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 notice. So 94,977 during 2004-14 is now 2,77,444 as of December 22nd, 2023. We still have months to go. That is 192% increase till December 2023. Now again, the 10-year period, grants and aid from Government of India 57,924.42 crores during 4 to 14, now 2,30,893 crores. Four times increase, 300% increase, 10 years of UPA, 9 years of NDA. The release of special assistance for Tamil Nadu. In the first year, they didn't take it. The second year, which is 21-22, 505.50 crores have been given for capital expenditure, interest-free, 50 years, don't worry, servicing it. 2022-23, <coughs> crores have been given again for Tamil Nadu as special assistance, 50-year, interest-free. 23-24, the current year, as on 11th December, 2,643.65 crores for capital expenditure, interest-free 50 years. So Tamil Nadu, Kerala, the figures are before you. It's, okay? Come on, come on, Mr. Oh. Thambidurai. One minute. You are a senior man. Oh, man. Sir. Please, please. No, please don't shout and please. Okay. Sir, two things, two things I want to. Mr. Munidran, you are joining them. Sir, I want to, I want to, first of all, this is the kind of, this is the kind of apprehension building. This is... Please. Yeah, please. Mr. Lamar, I'm cream. Mr. Sir. You are a senior member, sir. Sir. Please, please, please. Oh. Please. Sir. Please, please. Please. Sir. Amazing. Amazing. Sir. Come on, minute, come on, one come on. One minute. Ma'am, one minute. Madam, sir. There's a problem. You are not on your seat. <laughs> Even if I want to show indulgence, I can't show. Sir. No indulgence on your seat. <laughs> sir. Yes. Sir, Honorable Member Elamaram Karim is a very senior member. Very? Very senior member. Yes. I think no dispute on that. Sir? And I have two observations to make before I comment. These are not data which I'm just releasing for the first time in this house. There are parliamentary questions. There are budget documents which are put up. Budget documents have breakdown by states. How much every state got under capital expenditure, 50 years, interest-free, everything is there already. 
the reason why I'm saying only Kerala is because Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu have in the course of discussion raised it. If they were interested in it, I don't think it will take much of a time. I'll get it and read it. One. Well, they they One, can sir. have access to it. Sir, now I give you my comment, if you permit me. These are not amounts determined because I like one state, I dislike the other state. These are the percentages given as per Finance Commission for tax devolution. The same amount, same percentage is used when I have a lump sum which I want to give for 50 year for capital uh, expenditure, interest free to all states. How do I divide that among states? The formula is the same formula which I use for tax devolution, also for dividing this money, which is purely not Finance Commission's recommendation, but Government of India wants to give. But the formula, Yelamaram Karimji, through you, I request, please, John Britta, should allow him to hear I'm answering him. So kindly, sir, Elamaram Karimji should kindly appreciate. Ma it is not my whims and fancies. Honorable Finance Minister, have you ever invited Elamaram Karim for a cup of coffee? No, no sir. <laughs> is there any <laughs> is there any risk element in it? Yes, sir. sir, I didn't invite. But I was very happy to receive him several times in my room yes, with chai or coffee if they chose, whatever they choose. They've, uh, Kareem, has, uh, honorable member, has come and met me several times. So now that you are slightly indicating, I'll invite him for a coffee as well. <laughs> Mr. Kareem is cream of the house. Oh. <laughs> so I want to dispel this myth, sir. Oh, my state is receiving less, that state is receiving more. I have no role to play in that. It is a um, number determined by the Finance Commission, which is for tax devolution. The same formula we have taken for something which is not under Finance Commission, which we want to give to the states, but there also we don't want any subjective element. The formulation is as given by the Finance Commission. So why would Kerala get something different from what it gets under the tax revolution, even on this. So comparing Gujarat, please, it's available in public domain. Go see it. Or I can always send it to honorable member. It is the formulation. I have 100 rupees. I have 1,000 rupees. I have 50,000 crores. The formulation is one given by the Finance Commission. Sir, honorable member Surjit, um, Surjewala, Ran, Randeep Surjewala ji, had quite a few issues on agriculture. I'm sure the agriculture ministry will be able to give him detailed point by point answers, but somewhat some of the uh, questions which he raised, I would want to address it as much as I can. I admit here that maybe some issues, I may not be in a position this very minute to answer him. I will request the minister agriculture to respond to him because those are issues which are very important and we need to answer it. First question, sir. I was surprised that this was raised, but I will answer it. PM Kisan Samman Nidhi. Why is the number originally 12 point some crores? Why was an answer given by the finance ministry saying it is nine and a half crores? My number understanding in Hindi, in English, may be a bit distorted by approximately saying the number that he said, but idea being, you started with 12 crores, one of the parliament replies said 9.2 crore, 9 and uh, sade now crore, SA something, and then there was also this thing about, now you're actually paying only 8 point some, some crores. Essentially, it's trying to say, you started with 12, but you're not giving 12, quite a few has dropped out. In fact, I was carefully <coughs> listening to him. When you started saying it was 14 crores, then 
when the last payment was made by Honorable Prime Minister in 15th November 2023, it was 8.93 crores. Then Finance Minister's response, Finance Ministry's response was 12 and a half crores or 3.8 crore gayab ho gaya hai, uda diya aapne. If I heard him right, I want to humbly submit that when the 12th installment was given, which is what is probably being referred to as November Payment 2023, ceding the data on land was a mandatory condition. In other words, what is the little possession of land that you have on which you're doing the farming? And as a result, only 8.55 crore farmers had ceded the details of their land. As a result, the 12th installment was released accordingly. Second, sir, during the 13th installment, Aadhaar-based payment was made mandatory along with land seeding. There were 8.11 crore farmers who had their land details seeded on the PM Kisan portal, and their other was also linked with their active DBT-enabled bank accounts. There are several accounts a farmer can maintain or anybody can maintain, but there is just that one account which is enabled for DBT payment. So during the 13th installment which was being given, the DBT enabled bank account, Aadhaar linkage, and the land details which are seeded are three of them put, to, put into the PM Kisan portal. So the 13th installment was released to them. The EKYC was made mandatory during the 15th installment release of the PM Kisan Yojana. And with this condition, over 8.12 crore farmers received the benefits. So the validation and the checks of land seeding, Aadhaar linking with bank accounts, and the payment to the eligible beneficiaries are an ongoing process. More people doing it, more will get it. Uh, to ensure deduplication. So there were several du duplication which are now being deduplicated and weeding off ineligible beneficiaries. That is why you find that the numbers vary, and these are absolutely recorded numbers, which I'd like to, through you, sir, give the honorable member. So then he also had very serious issue about minimum support price, procurement based on minimum support price, actually not happening, and so on. So I just very quickly could rustle up some data, which I will do now, and more information I will have the agriculture minister pass on. Sir, during uh, Rabi marketing season, 14-15, wheat, 1,400 was the price per quintal. During the Rabi marketing season of 23-24, which is the latest, the price, uh, which is for the year 23-24, the price was 2,125 rupees per quintal. The minimum support price for Rabi marketing season 24-25, which is the oncoming on us, is 2,275. So in a matter of 10 years, sir, from 1,400 to 2,125 to 2,275 is the per quintal price for MSP for wheat. Cost of production, RMS, that is uh, Rabi marketing uh, se season, is 1,128. Increase in absolute MSP is 150 rupees. Margin over the cost is 102 rupees. So similarly, I will say for barley, gram, lentils, that is masoor, mustard, and safla. 1,114.15, 1,735 in 23-24, 1,850 in 
um, 25. There, the margin over the cost, I'm uh, skipping the first two uh, column, is 60 rupees. Gram, 3,100, 5,534. Now it is 5,440. 60 rupees again is the margin, per, uh, per quintal margin. Masoor, 2,950. Now it is 6,425. 89 rupees is the margin over the cost per, in percentage, I'm saying. Mustard, sir, 3,050. Now it's gone up to 5,650. 98% uh, margin uh, between these two numbers. And Safla, 3,000, went up to 5,650. Now it is 5,800 rupees MSP for Rabi marketing season. So we have constantly kept pace with the cost increase and kept giving higher MSP for farmers. Sir, I wouldn't be mistaken by you, hopefully, and not mistaken also by the member. I want to say, during the Congress government in Rajasthan, Bajra farmers, because there was no MSP-based procurement in Rajasthan of Bajra at that time, I would want honorable members to recall and correct me if I'm wrong. Rajasthan's farmers with their Bajra packets were going or bags were going to Haryana. BJP ruled Haryana for them to be procured. And Haryana government was wondering, where are all these bajra coming from? Our own bajra is this much. Now I'm having three times more bajra suddenly for procurement. But they didn't send away any farmer without procuring. You are Rajasthan farmer, chali jao. Nahi bola. Procure kia Haryana ne. Rajasthan Congress Sarkar. Randeep Surjewala ji, I wish he was telling them also this at that time. Procurement nahi ho aus samay. Aur mein ye bhi yaad dilao. Kisan ke upar aaj agar koi congress wale bolte hai. Mein yaad dilana chaati hu sir. Pehle agriculture farmers budget. Humare Yedurapa ji ne Karnataka sarkar mein pesh kiya. Farmers ke liye alag budget. So congress wale zara soch lehen. Kisan ke upar aaj. क्या बोलते हैं क्रोकोडाइल टीयर्स मगर मच्छी का आंसू बहाने वाले अजना करना सर हाँ सर the last point sir yes there are also MSP prices for others like Bajra, Jowar, Ragi, Mes it's there here I lay it on the table I don't want to take more time of the house one uh, just one more matter Vinay Vishwamji who I respect I don't know if he's here he's gone but there are other comrades here so they will hear it and pass it on no yeah, yeah, yeah. sir our you know, Kerala needs finances to be very punctual because there is a function at my residence so sir? so to keep up that appointment he may have left a valid ground yeah. MLAs, ministers, chief ministers made a big, big show here. Please kindly what the amount you released to Karnataka because I am with you. I have to answer there. Sir, uh, I respect honorable former prime minister. Uh, no, he, he, he is respected countrywide. Of course, and I in my home him, constituency sir. of Dhunjnu, he is known to every household. And he's a farmer himself and has been a very active propagand of millet. Himself has so impacted so many of us because of his ragi mudde. He's very well known for his uh, farmer concerns. Yesterday I had given a very detailed press meet, sir. All the details about amounts released. I also spoke about it in, uh, in uh, Lok Sabha. But unfortunately, I didn't think I'll have the time today. You've spoken so in I will Sabha. certainly send it to you even this evening, sir. Okay. So, so, uh, sir, the, uh, so I was I, I, referring to one point about Binay Vishwam, sir. 
he's not here but uh, i'm sure the comrades will allow me he was back again talking about this is adani government i want to say again one fact virinjam port was given by the congress people to adani adani is invited even by the congress in telangana new government but they will never tire themselves by saying no. oh you are adani adani they invite them no, no. peeche ke darwaza is it business hota hai magar allegation hamare upar but communist government the masses marxists who came to power if they are really so averse to adani why didn't they ask him to get out of virinjam project is going on ha ah, so that is all right you put the blame on honorable uh, finance minister put the blame one second on congress but you live with adani honorable finance minister you live with adani honorable so, finance minister one second honorable finance minister no one second yes. honorable finance minister that narrative decibel is the lowest at the moment so okay. you can so close I on that provoke. yes yes okay. the, that narrative decibel is the lowest nothing will go on record nothing will go on record now so i shall now put the motion regarding consideration